Thank you, Hannah. And it's a pleasure to be here with you all today. Um, as Hannah says, my name is Peter Rausenbach, and I'm here to talk about uh, nukes and artificial intelligence, primarily the potential risks associated with integrating them with uh, nuclear command systems, such as early warning and our control systems. And I'd like to just give thanks to everyone I've talked to at Cary, uh, the experts, and give special thanks both to my mentor, Hayden Belfield, who gave me constant feedback and encouragement and kept me from making any bonkers claims half the time. And also, I'd like to thank the technical problems we've had here today, because that's literally what I'm talking about. Tech not working when you need it to, so it's kind of perfect for my uses. All right. So basically, I see this problem as coming in, a, is in the diagram I have above here. One, there is pressure to integrate artificial intelligence, or more accurately, machine learning and deep learning, with Nuclear Command Control and Communications, or NC3. This leads to possible modernization, which has inherent potential risks associated with it, coming from two parts. You'll see there's like technical flaws in AI systems, and there's a list of them there. So there's like things that are inherently problems with uh, our modern versions of AI, and at least near-term AI. And there's also the issue relating to the human uh, machine relationship which sort of is how are we going to change our decision-making process as automation increases and can that cause risk? And this all kind of comes to a particular head during a nuclear crisis or a period of high tension. And we talked, you know, we had Vara talk about India, Pakistan and the sort of crises there or the Cuban Missile Crisis. And I'm specifically focusing on inadvertent nuclear use. And again, as Vara said, this is sort of mistaken use, not an accident, but you purposefully choosing to launch your weapons in response to usually like a false alarm. And one last thing before I go on is that nuclear risk already exists. The artificial intelligence integration isn't creating exactly a new problem. It's just potentially pushing us over the threshold into use. So like I'll go over some of my motivation, definitions, bit of scope, and then I'll jump into the inherent dangers because my idea here is to list them and how they interact with nuclear strategy theory, especially for those who don't know much about AI or who's trying to figure out how this technology is going to impact what we've been doing for decades. And then I'll provide a quick analysis of some solutions and then probably skip over the funding thing altogether just because I'm going to run at a time as one does when you try and smush 40 pages into 12 minutes. So quick couple definitions. As I said, machine learning and deep learning are primarily what I'm talking about when I say AI because that's really what's allowed these advances in detection and automation that we'll see in the near future. NC3, again, Nuclear Command Control and Communications is, in short, the whole apparatus we use to control weapons of mass destruction, prevent their use, plan for their use. This includes both human components and machine components. And then I'm focusing on the US and Western allies because one, that's what I'm best able to talk about. And two, a lot of what I'm saying can be generalized to most nuclear powers, obviously with some caveats, but the issue is more with the technology and our relationship with it rather than any particular state. So. The background is that there's pressure to integrate, and this comes from a couple things. One, we're throwing billions upon billions of upgrading our, our command systems currently. I mean, they used to run on floppy disks until very, very recently, and so there's an effort to change that. Two, there's just benefits from artificial intelligence. We could increase the quality of our analysis, the speed of it. We could remove that pesky human bias and racism and sexism from our nuclear decision making, hopefully. And there's also these great power dynamics and, and conflicts kind of pushing states to aggressively pursue things so they don't fall behind because AI could dramatically transform the face of warfare and nuclear warfare. And so to do that, you're kind of almost forced into this race, which arguably you could step back from whenever you want, but these dynamics are pressuring it. And so that's why I think there's a pressure to integrate, even though all of this is incredibly classified and it's not exactly like they're saying exactly what they're doing, but there seems to be clear indicators that if this conversation is not happening now, it's going to happen very soon. So speaking of flaws and issues here and things not working when you apparently put it on the big screen, um, technical flaws are sort of inherent problems and hurdles within modern artificial intelligence technology that I think could impact risk. So starting with alignment, this is usually talked about in terms of artificial general intelligence, but you know, as machine learning experts will know, getting your ML systems to work as intended can be very difficult. They might seem to work properly, but they might be misaligned as to how they get to their conclusion. And that's sort of a problem when you're determining uh, you need it to do a specific reliable job in an intense period of crisis. This leads to the black box issue, which I would almost argue is the core thing. And the basics of this is we don't know what's going on in these systems. We can measure their outputs. We can try our best to figure it out, but they're insanely complex. 
And even though they seem to work again and again and again, in a period of crisis when things are more complex than they've ever been and you need it to work, things break. And we can't even assess why they're giving us their output. And so if you have a machine intelligence telling you there's incoming missiles coming at you, it'd be great to figure out why they're telling you that. But we can't, or at least it's very difficult to do so. Then there's brittleness, which is basically the tendencies for powerful in the intelligence systems to fall apart when there's something outside their learn set. Uh, more technically, this might be known as a distributional shift. And you do need to remember that war is an atypical situation. You can prepare for it. You can plan for it. As soon as conflict starts, you're going to be confused. Things will surprise you. And this is not really any different, arguably, for artificial intelligence. Human bias is also within the machines that we expect to act like robots, the stereotypical robot, no emotion, no prejudice, but that's just not true. Uh, we train them and we put our own biases into them. And this is like a, there's a 2014 to 2018 hire, or Amazon hiring AI that learned from previous resumes. Well, it turns out the tech industry is a bit sexist, as you might've heard, and the AI started perpetuating these problems in their hiring practices. And this is a problem again, if you're expecting pure good math and statistics. Finally, these machines tend to be overconfident or unable to be uncertain. So even if they're wrong or they're not 100% sure, you give a dog classifying system the image of a cat, and it might tell you it's a corgi with 99% confidence, regardless of whether it's correct or not. And again, this is an issue when you're talking about weapons of mass destruction. As far as the human-machine relationship goes, I'll touch a little bit less on the flaws here and just this idea of proper confidence in your systems. So. We haven't used these weapons aggressively, at least in like detonating them over cities since World War II. And figuring out why that's the case, as I think I mentioned earlier, is just inherently hard. There's obviously a, com a combination of factors that have played into this, but I would argue that human limitations and uncertainty can be important um, things that help us prevent nuclear use because they're how we've made decisions before. In fact, there's multiple examples where being uncertain and not trusting the machine have prevented uh, use from happening even in very tense situations. A few of these include the Stanislav uh, Petrov situation in the Soviet Union, and there's a few NORAD examples, again, in the Cold War on the Western side. Basically, these involved computer systems indicating with high degrees of confidence that an attack was incoming, dozens of missiles at times. In the, in the um, NORAD one, it said there was over 2,000 Soviet missiles coming in. I mean, this turned out to be there was a faulty computer chip in that one. Again, in the Stanislav Petrov case, a faulty machine. Both were obviously wrong, but because the individuals had skepticism of their machines and what was going on, they figured it was a false alarm and decided to not trust their system. On the other hand, in 2003 in Iraq, there's something known as the Patriot Missile Patricides. These are basically designed to shoot incoming ballistic missiles against uh, you know, American forces, but they had a 25% friendly fire rate. And two of these are key examples where one misidentified a friendly fighter jet as an incoming missile and shot it out of the sky, killing everyone involved. And another, they thought they were tracking another incoming missile. Turns out there was just nothing there. The machine made a mistake. They fired it into the air and it didn't find an incoming missile, but it did find again, a friendly jet and shot it out of the sky. And it was found that the people in these systems had a culture of overconfidence and trust in the machine. There was an assumption that it would just couldn't be wrong. And it was due to their training and too much trust and people died. And so the point being that the correct amount of confidence and skepticism, regardless of how powerful your AI is, is imperative here, especially for some of these biases as I have back there, like automation bias. It's again, trust in the machine implicitly, sort of an issue. And then machine speed and out of the loop are linked. Basically, it turns out computers are a little bit faster than we are, as you may have noticed. And this desire for them to work quickly in combat, to face against cyber warfare, or weapons moving at the speed of sound means we might start pre-delegating combat authority to computers and artificial intelligences more and more, simply because we need that speed, especially if adversaries have it. And that pushes humans further out of the decision-making loop. And the problem here is that our critical thinking skills are often touted as, our, as an ability to control the intelligent but kind of stupid AI systems we use because they just can't critically think. But if we get pushed out of the loop more and more, well, then we can't be there to stop them from making bad decisions. And, and again, in the nuclear weapon case, potentially leading to mass use and genocide and death. So this is an incredibly important thing to remember. Finally, misplaced confidence is we think we have an amazingly powerful AI. We can do anything. And it makes us over aggressive because we think we are just 
on top of the world there. And that can also, again, lead to aggressive action or action when we shouldn't have taken it. So as far as solutions go, there's six here that I kind of came up with slash found online a little bit. And the, the ones I like work on controlling people and policy rather than the AI tech itself. So keeping humans in the loop, I don't think is a good solution. Again, because that machine speed issue, I think we're going to be pushed out somewhat necessarily to keep up with the pace of warfare. Even if you disagree with what you should do, it may just happen as we automate more and more. Not integrating AI with nuclear command, again, while it is good to argue for this potentially, I just find it incredibly unlikely that in the next 10, 15 years that we're just not going to see more and more automation in these systems. So you might be uh, fighting against the inevitable. And improving AI to eliminate technical problems, maybe it's a possibility. Some of these problems may be unsolvable, and at least in the next 10 years, given how long defense procurement takes, today's problems are going to matter. And so we kind of have to work around these. Now, for the ones I like, updating nuclear policy to reflect a changing paradigm could be, sir, for example, right now you can fire your weapons within like a couple minutes if you needed to. Basically, you can fire them in a couple minutes, 30 minutes later, you build a sun in someone's city and you wipe it out. Right Now, if we were to make it impossible to fire them so quickly, then regardless of how broken our people, our systems are, we can't accidentally cause genocide. Now, this has high impact, but very low probability, but it's still something to consider. There's ensuring better training, again, instilling the better confidence and skepticism in our people to know what's going on. Again, high probability in this case, medium to low impact. And finally, confidence building measures or CBMs basically reduce uncertainty and tensions between nations. They give a clear understanding of where states stand. So for example, indicating that human hands will only ever be in control of the launch decision, which the UK has done, would be a great start. This is lower impact, but arguably necessary and important to making sure that we can change policy. And with that, I'm actually done perfectly on time. Thank you so much.